everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about our work Neural Mini Propagation Decoding of Quantum RGBC Codes using overcomplete check matrices. I'm Cici Miao. I'm currently a PhD student at Cal School Institute of Technology. And this is, jo uh, this is a joint work with my colleagues. We have presented this at the Information Theory Workshop 2023. Okay, um, I would like to start with some background, uh, the big picture of this work. So we are looking at the error correction for quantum computers and more specifically we look at um, decoding quantum RGBC codes which is a promising candidate for this task. And uh, quantum RGBC codes can be decoded just as their classical counterpart um, uh, with a PD propagation decoder. The problem is that uh, due to the special properties of quantum codes the decoding performance is usually not satisfying. And um, um, inspired by the success of neuron BP for classical codes, uh, people have applied neuron BP for quantum RGBC codes, but so far, owing to the uh, sub uh, suboptimal uh, binary BD propagation decoders, and this uh, is an not as good as the uh, by, uh, quaternary BP decoder, which we will be looking at in this work. And also we want to uh, combine this with the overcomplete check matrices, which gives us both decoding gain and the benefits in training. Uh, before I talk about the details, I would like to start defining some notations we call a stabilizer code, which use n logical qubit to and physical qubit to, de, uh, to encode k logical qubits as the uh, nk stabilizer codes. And to derive a stabilizer code, we can work with the uh, additive codes over GF4, and we want to define them with their check matrix S, which is n by n matrix, and n is n minus k, uh, is the number of checks. So we call every row SI of S a check um, of the code, and um, each of the SI correspond to a stabilizer generator SI, which can be used pr to produce a syndrome for us. And um, for example, we can use this mapping from GF4 elements to the poly operators. And um, um, to make sure that the st stabilizer code is the indeed a, a, a valid code, we need to make sure that S is self-orthogonal with respect to the trace in the product, or to say the Hermitian in the project. This corresponds to the commutativity of the stabilizer group. Um, um, what do I mean by that? Um, so um, we say that S is self-orthogonal, that means every row of S, any two rows of S are orthogonal to each other, uh, more specifically, that means that if we take the sum of the element-wise trace inner product, uh, the sum is zero modular two, and um, this uh, element-wise trace inner product is given in this table, and we can see that this uh, result is uh, exactly the same as the commutativity relationship of the Pauli operators. That is to say, if in this presentation I say two uh, um, errors or two operators commute with, with each other, then it means that the uh, corresponding GF4 element has trace in the product uh, being zero. Okay, let's look at the example code. This is a 7-1 steam code constructed from the 7-4 BCH code, uh, which are classical. And you can see that this is the check matrix of this code, which has six rows. This corresponds to the six stabilizer generators, which generates the stabilizer group. And um, more specifically, we call a stabilizer code which has check matrix in this form. So you can see like this one, uh, where hx and hz are both binary matrices. Then we call them, uh, them as the CSS code, which is named after the inventors of this code. And um, the quantum RDBC codes we are uh, we are looking at are CSS codes, and they have a sparse um, check matrix, which means that the row and the column weights are upper bounded by a small constant, which is irrelevant to the block length. 
Okay, now let's look at decoding quantum FBC codes. Uh, this psi L is the logical quantum state that we are trying to protect. It will be encoded to a uh, n qubit uh, state psi. Then it will uh, go through a quantum channel. For example, if it sits in a, if it is in a quantum memory, it could be the uh, environment that post um, uh, pollution over time. So this can be modeled as the depolarizing channel, which introduced the x, that, and y errors with equal probability epsilon over three. And then the um, polluted quantum state is a e psi, which we can uh, pass into a single measurement circuit, which produces us um, the um, uh, syndrome z, which is a lens n binding vector. Then we can use um, Z to um, decode by using a syndrome BD propagation decoder, which operates on the check matrix of this code and gives us an estimation um, E hat of the error. And we write the uh, uh, calligraphic letter to denote that this is the poly operator because in the quantum um, uh, system we'll use the uh, quantum operators. So this E hat um, will be uh, applied as the reverse operation or to say as the correction of the error E. So uh, if we have a decoding that's, that's successful, we will return E hat E psi being the same as psi. So as I write here, so note this is different from classical coding where we actually need to estimate E hat being same as E. And in this case, because of the definition of stabilizer code, uh, we only need to make sure that E hat E is the stabilizer. And because applying a stabilizer to a quantum state does not change the state, we will have a successful decoding. And to check this, so um, in optimizing a, a decoder, we want to evaluate that the decoding is indeed successful. What we can do is to, to use uh, the dual matrix of S, which we call as S dual. So this is the kernel of S with respect to the uh, trace inner product that we defined earlier. And because S dual is the kernel of S, it is uh, sufficient to say if E, e plus, uh, plus E hat is in is orthogonal to every row of S uh, S dual, then we can say that e, e plus E hat is indeed a stabilizer. Okay, that is the framework of the decoding. Now let's take a closer look at the depropagation de decoder. This is still the example code that we introduced earlier, the steam code. Um, first of all, we need to draw a telegraph. In this case, we have uh, uh, edges of different color which correspond to the coefficient of the, um, uh, uh, of the element. Then we have different options to decode. The first option is the simple one. We could uh, treat HS uh, uh, hx and hz as two separate binary matrices uh, which enables us to use the simple binary BT decoder. However, in this case some errors are not possible to be corrected therefore the error flaw is higher and the performance is not so good. And the second uh, option we have is to use the quaternary BD propagation decoder which jointly decode a x and z error and will have a better performance but also a higher complexity because of the message passing, which is a vector uh, message. And uh, fortunately, we have this recently proposed uh, refined BP4 decoder uh, by Ku and Lai. And in this uh, refined BP4, we could compress the vector message to scalar, and also the output of the decoding will be exactly the same as BP4 decoder but the complexity is only comparable to BP4, BP2 decoder, which is uh, beneficial if we want to introduce neural BD propagation uh, decoding. Okay, now um, I will introduce the uh, BD propagation decoding with um, the refined BP. First of all, we need to do initialization. 
um, to for the variable node we uh, we have this only input is the channel statistics which we estimated from the channel note that this we because we cannot look at the quantum state we will not have any uh, LLR on the uh, real values of the uh, qubit but in uh, instead just a constant for every node then um, we have a LLR for uh, every um, errors uh, of the three type then what we can do is to use this belief, uh, belief quantization which is introduced in the refined BP to compress the message into a scalar message so um, I will not go to the details here but we can note that the uh, messages that that we are passing in the refined BP is the belief of the ith error being commute with the um, element of the edge that is being passed to. Okay, that's the, the initialization. Then we will pass the message to the check nodes, which performs the usual uh, some uh, box plus operation over the extrinsic messages. And the syndrome is used to flip the sign of the message if a certain check node is said to be unsatisfied by the uh, a measurement uh, we did earlier. Then we can pass the message to the VN uh, to the variable nodes, which does the sum of the channel uh, information together with the extrinsic message. Then again, we do the belief quantization to compress it into the scalar message. Hard decision is also performed to uh, estimate the error here, and we uh, repeat this process. So. Um, uh, so on so first here we have the syndrome matched or the num maximum number of iteration has reached. Now we are ready to introduce our neural belief propagation decoder. So uh, the idea is to, uh, if we unroll the belief propagation decoder, it will look like a neural network. And what we can do is to add trainable weights which are dependent on the iteration L. So more specifically, in our case, we introduce ways for uh, for the variable nodes. We introduce ways on the channel information. So we can see that for every uh, every uh, variable node, it has a weight together with the channel statistics as input, and um, the um, the weights are dependent with the index of the variable node and the number of iteration uh, and the index of the current iteration. And also for the check node, we introduced a weight that is applied directly to the message of the check node. Then we can optimize these weights using uh, stochastic gradient descent by minimizing a loss function, which we proposed here. This is the loss per error pattern, and um, uh, it is a bit big, but we will walk you through uh, step by step. Um, this is the notation in case you forget some. Um, so what we are doing here is to use the uh, condition of uh, verifying the uh, decoding success that we introduced earlier. So we said earlier that if we have E plus E hat being orthogonal to every row of uh, S-dual, then it means the uh, E plus E hat is the, inside the stabilizer space. Then the decoder, uh, decoding is successful. What we do here is to break this uh, condition into element-wise sum. So that is to say for a certain row as j dual, we compute the probability of e high, uh, ei plus e hat being anti-commute with, with the ith element of sj dual, um, which can be estimated in the uh, variable node update. Then because we know that um, the number of, uh, of um, anti-commuting elements here should be close to an even number, um, so we use the f function here which does uh, something like a soft modular tool. Then we have if this sj dual is satisfied, then we have the loss function for this row uh, approaches to zero then we can sum the loss over all rows of s dual to get the uh, loss of this error pattern. And then we can apply a stochastic gradient descent 
by training over small mini batches. Um, however, we found that the uh, this plain uh, MVP decoder does not give a good performance. Uh, indeed, the gain is only negligible if we apply it directly because we see that the loss um, decreases, but it will soon reach some plateau and stops decreasing. And um, the reason is that this um, this uh, loss function has m many local minimum, and uh, it is not really the problem of the loss function, but because of the uh, de degeneracy of the quantum codes. So what we do is here we want to introduce something additional called overcomplete check matrices. It looks like this here. What we do is we want to modify the check matrix. This is the original four rank matrix and this is the overcomplete one. So you can see that the original matrix is kept here. But we additionally introduce some redundant rows <coughs> which are of low weight. Uh, selected from the row space of the original matrix. And this method has been investigated in, uh, in classical uh, uh, coding and we use it here because for one thing it gives us a good decoding gain which means that we are closer to the optimum and second it reduces number of iterations which means more operations can be done in parallel and which is very nice where um, uh, low latency decoding is desired for the quantum uh, com uh, error correction. And the third thing is that we can avoid training a very deep neural network which can be problematic. And um, to construct the overcomplete check matrix, we need to search for low weight words in the row space of hx and hz, which is itself an NP-hard problem, but because we have some algorithms such as the algorithm by Leon, and uh, which enables us to do this for uh, block lengths up to a few thousand fairly easily. Okay, now look at how it works. We uh, consider a generalized bicycle codes because one thing that they are famous codes, the second thing is that they have uh, naturally have a set of uh, overcomplete checks. And we uh, no uh, training has yet been applied on this slide. And we will only look uh, plain belief propagation BP4 decoding with 32 iterations if we didn't specify the number of iterations and flooding the scheduling is used. So here is a code of uh, 40, uh, length 48 encoding six logical qubits. And we see that this, this line is the original decoding performance and now we expand the check matrix to 2000 rows which is very big compared to the original one but we can see that the decoding performance is much better and also the, um, we in, uh, reduce the number of iterations needed to only three. For another code that is with uh, a, a lower rate we also observe the similar behavior here we have 800 rows of uh, um, the uh, overcomplete check matrix and here we only use six iterations but the gain is similar. We also have the result for two uh, bigger codes. Here we can observe a similar gain but here we did not find uh, a, uh, a large number of uh, redundant checks just as these codes so we only add 28 low weight checks but uh, we can still get a good performance gain if we keep the number of iteration uh, unchanged. Now let's look at the neural belief propagation decoding results. Um, these are the two small codes that I showed earlier with the plain BP4 decoder with the original BP4 and the overcomplete. And here we can see this is the um, BP uh, serial BP plus ordered, ordered statistic decoding uh, as post processing. If we use overcomplete check matrices, they perform similarly, but uh, we have the advantage that we can uh, finish the decoding in a very small number of iterations. Then we can apply training uh, based on the BP over uh, the overcomplete check matrix. We can see that we can still get uh, an, another good decoding gain. And, uh, it is interesting that after after training we actually also see that the weight 
uh, for the low weight checks are, uh, are bigger than the weights for the high, high weight checks, which matches our expectation. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. I would like to conclude now. So in this work, we investigated neuron belief propagation for decoder for quantum LBC codes, and we uh, combined it with check uh, with overcomplete check matrices, and together we get a very good uh, decoding gain, which is um, better than the state of the art. Um, most, um, moreover, if you want to see uh, the implementation of uh, the neural belief propagation decoder, you are you can go to this uh, GitHub repository or scan the QR code. Or if you are just interested in, uh, like, uh, I want to get to know quantum encoding, you can when you want to see how can I simulate um, uh, quantum memory correction codes, you can also uh, look here. Okay, uh, thank you for your attention. This is all of my presentation. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave uh, in the comment line, in the comments below or contact us. Bye-bye.